for something completely different. Um, so my name is Shannon Zhang. I am a PGY3 general surgery resident from Queen's University, Canada. And I'd like to present to you today uh, regarding our study uh, for sleep deprivation and medication errors in surgery residents. I do not have any conflict of interest to uh, declare. So many of, many of you may have felt like this gentleman here after a night of very busy call and having next to no sleep. And some of you may even have wondered, should I really be making clinical decisions right now being sleep deprived as I am? So many people in the past have asked questions uh, of such nature. And in the literature, uh, sleep deprivation has been linked to impaired decision making, increased medical errors, and increased adverse events. Um, despite that, uh, there's still conflicting evidence of its effect on adverse outcome overall, especially relating to procedural specialties. Um, but I wondered whether or not the uh, aspects from the standpoint of medication errors where it's somewhat less exciting to us surgeons here if that is more affected uh, in terms of sleep deprivation. Um, in the literature, we were able to see that medication errors were frequently associated with lack of sleep. And since surgical residents are often sleep deprived, we wanted to see if the prevalence of medication errors for general surgery residents relating to their call status is affected in any way. So this is how we performed our study. So we had recruited general surgery residents ranging from PGYs 1 to 5 and looked at their medication errors that are written from 0500. Oh, oh dear. Sorry. It's doing that thing again. Um, from 0500 to 0800, and as that represents the uh, time when surgical residents will be rounding and most of the medication errors are written, and this was all collected on a single surgical floor. These medication errors are then uh, delivered down to our pharmacy department where the errors are then communicated back to the floor via medication memorandums. At the same time, we also had independent assessors who look at these errors as well and uh, compared them to the medication taxonomy definition that we had uh, collected through our literature search, which I will talk about uh, later on. These medication errors are then divided into their no-call or post-call status, depending on the resident who is of that status at that time. Because this is a within-subject study, we actually compare the rate of the medication errors with each other rather than the individual residents uh, themselves who are post-call or no-call. We decided to exclude any consulting service errors, any uh, verbal, uh, sorry, consul consulting service orders, any verbal orders as there could be some transcription errors that are involved in this, and any admission orders as these involve a different ordering process. But we did decide to include clerk cosign orders as the residents themselves will have to look uh, over the orders and sign them. Uh, we generated our taxonomy for comparison as mentioned before. And we also wanted to see if residents themselves are uh, aware of whether or not they make more errors or if they think that they make more errors when they are sleep deprived. And we also wanted to see how sleep deprived they are by assessing their sleep hours when they're on call versus when they're not on call. So here are our results. Um, so this represents our very comprehensive uh, literature search that we did, uh, essentially generating our medication taxonomy. A total of 29 definitions were identified. Some of the examples of this include uh, uh, ordering a drug without accounting for a significant drug interaction or accounting for a significant drug allergy. And this is grouped under what's called decision-making uh, medical errors, where the uh, errors themselves are relating to clinical reasoning. Whereas the prescription writing errors are more so the uh, errors that are generated when you're physically writing out a prescription. So these include not including a dose or a route or not including as, or specifying that it's a PRN status. So in terms of how sleep deprived our residents are, sorry, uh, the residents sleep uh, on average uh, one to two hours when they're on call versus five to six hours when they're not on call, which is according to our uh, national uh, average. And 100% of our residents thought that they made more errors when they were post-call. Um, so on average, the residents thought that when they were post-call, they made five to 10% of medication errors, whereas when they're not on call, they made between one to 5% of medication errors. This here represents the uh, spread of uh, PGY years uh, within our study uh, during our study duration. And so as you can see here, the PGY year numbers between the two months are fairly comparable. 
So in our study period, uh, there were a total of 326 medication orders that were identified, 250 of which were written uh, while not on call, and 76 were written while post-call. Excuse me. And uh, using these numbers, we were able to see that our total error rate on our surgical floor was 4.6%. And interestingly, we were able to see that the post-call error rates were 9.2% and no-call error rates, sorry, uh, was 3.2%. Uh, and this is actually uh, somewhat in keeping with what the residents have predicted, predicted for themselves. And we did find this to be statistically significant. We also thought it would be interesting to take a look and see if there is a difference between July and August to see if there's a difference between the error rates. And we actually did find this. Um, sorry. Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. <laughs> so uh, the error rate uh, in July we found to be higher at 6.1% with post-call errors at 12.5% and no-call errors at 4.3%. And the error rates themselves do uh, dimin diminish excuse me, uh, in August as well. And uh, these were not entirely statistically significant, however, based on our low event rate. In terms of the types of errors that we had observed, uh, we uh, have found a number of decision-making and prescription writing errors. So some of these examples include uh, prescribing two drugs for the same indication when only one is necessary. So as an example, you'd be prescribing two beta blockers for someone with atrial fibrillation for rate control or two anticoagulation uh, medications, uh, or prescribing a dose that's not recommended for the formulation that's prescribed. So um, essentially prescribing a medication that can only be given in one route uh, that, can, uh, that was given or ordered as IV. And uh, in terms of prescription writing, so and as an example, uh, we, uh, there was a medication error where there was not a specification of PRN orders. And you can see how that could potentially cause an adverse event where a, a patient was given uh, morphine regularly and uh, could cause a potential overdose. We also found that 66% uh, of the errors were made by first year residents, and most of these uh, errors were due to prescription writing, whereas 20% were due to decision making. 33% of these errors were written by our senior residents, uh, and 60% uh, of these represent decision making, and 40% represent uh, prescription writing errors. So we thought that uh, the results supported our hypothesis that sleep deprivation is associated with significantly increased medication errors as seen in our results. Uh, and uh, specifically in post-call residents compared to no-call residents. And there is certainly a trend towards more pres prescription writing errors and greater number of errors uh, committed by first-year residents as well. And this uh, seems to uh, give us a bit of room in terms of uh, intervening on these types of errors. In our post-talk analysis, we also showed that there was increased error frequency in July compared to August. And this is actually in, co in concordance with the well-described July effect that has been seen in literature before, where residents who are uh, transitioning into a uh, period of study where they're entering PGY-1 for the first time and they are adjusting to new uh, work hours as well as uh, a steep learning curve in terms of their knowledge acquisition. And they are more prone to making mistakes during this process. And so uh, we thought that uh, with the experience and pattern recognition that they have with increased uh, work, uh, with increased work amount, that their error rates actually diminish over time. And that might explain what we saw in August in terms of the decreased error rates overall. So um, in terms of any interventions that we could potentially do to try to mitigate these errors, we thought that it would be reasonable to suggest a prescription writing refresher course as part of our competency-based medical education, which is currently uh, being initiated in Canada. And uh, as part of our foundation to practice curriculum or boot camp, uh, we can introduce this curriculum at that time to help mitigate some of these errors that could potentially occur. The other uh, thing that we thought that would potentially help is uh, the use of electronic order systems. So this is a study that was conducted at a hospital where we use carbon copy orders ra as, rather than electronic ordering systems. And so some of the errors such as missing dose or missing route can be addressed this way. So we do have several limitations as this is our pilot study and we're trying to uh, figure out if there's anything we need to iron out. Um, so certainly decision-making errors with potential for severe adverse events in our institution are communicated directly uh, to the residents by our clinical pharmacists. And these are not captured within the uh, methods that we uh, collected our errors. 
This is also a single surgical unit uh, within a single surgical special specialty, so our results may not be necessarily generalizable. And since our event rate is quite low, we definitely need a longer period of uh, study time to essentially ensure that our data is uh, more accurate. So in terms of future directions, uh, we do plan on addressing these uh, deficiencies as mentioned previously. And we think we would be interesting to compare between the PGY years and the timing of orders as well throughout the year to uh, assess appropriately whether or not the effect of July versus later on in the year changes the way uh, and changes the frequency of medication errors. We also want to increase our study length and uh, resident recruitment. And we uh, ultimately want to expand our study to include other surgical specialties and as well as uh, consideration of a multi-centric collaboration. Thank you very much.